I'm quite uh, distrustful of any kind of health fundamentalism that offers the one cause for disease and the one solution for it. And, and various fads come and go. For example, to blame all conditions on parasites or on acidosis or on inflammation or on trauma. Like there's these uh, mind-body uh, doctrines that, that come and go. And I think all of them offer a powerful lens on health and illness. But the nature of, like I've known some very powerful healers who themselves became ill and were unable to heal themselves with their own modality. And that is because health is, uh, uh, illness is an initiation. And an initiation has to bring you beyond who you already are and what you already know. That's the nature of it. So, so no matter how powerful a healer you are, no matter how knowledgeable you are about nutrition and about exercise, and you know all of the, the, the latest knowledge, um, when your soul's journey comes to a transition point, you may need that initiation of something that none of your knowledge helps you with. That's the dilemma that requires growth, requires one to first to, to, to be humble. Because uh, you try, you're like, okay, I know how to handle this. I know what to do. And I've been telling everybody else what to do, so I must be able to do this uh, and do it for, for myself and demonstrate that I've been right all along. And, and so the, the initial stage of that, that body-born initiation is um, to try as hard as you can doing the things that you thought would work and don't actually work, and then to let go of that and to step into what I call the space between stories where you just don't know anymore. And that rather humiliating experience is the genesis of new knowledge. That's the, the, that empty space is where uh, new knowledge can come in and, and that release is what allows new growth to happen. Thank you, Charles. There's one more question here that's very popular. Uh, Alex asks, I'm a bioethicist and I'm very interested in medicine slash technology and suffering. Do you not feel that advanced medicine and technology can have its place in alleviating suffering? Can future medicine technology not be in a collaborative way designed to help with suffering rather than in a dominant way? Thank you. Yeah, uh, I, I don't think that, that any modality, including high tech modalities, is useless. I think that they all have their place. And the problem today is that high tech uh, control based medicine has gone beyond its proper place and, and usurped the place of other ways of healing and other ways of, of staying well. Uh, but it definitely has its use and in its proper domain, it's miraculous. I mean, the, 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 you know, for example, saving people from severe trauma or, um, you know, uh, septic shock, you know, or like, I mean, you can be on death's door it uh, burns over 90% of your body, et cetera, et cetera. Traffic accident, you know, gunshot wound. I mean, it's incredible what high-tech medicine can do. And, 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 but if you're talking about uh, 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 chronic diseases uh, and the diseases of civilization, it isn't helping very much. So yeah, the, the, it's about what is the proper role of uh, each of these modalities. And, and I would just like to see um, a lot more of our collective energy go toward researching the low tech um, modalities and, and the ones that, and, and developing infrastructure for those and developing social acceptance and systemic acceptance of those. Like pretty much everything I do for my health is not covered by insurance. 